I'll tell you guys, welcome. Uh, sorry, we're, uh, we're sorry, not sorry. Uh, we're a little bit later coming on. Uh, the Lord, uh, we had a prayer uh, request uh, time together, and then we had an anointing service, and the Lord is just uh, moving and, and, and touching and delivering. So we welcome you to the service if you're watching tonight or whenever you're watching. We love you. Um, our, our, we have a lot of our uh, church members, our uh, part of our home church. We, we, we miss you tonight. You're, you're, I know you're sick, a lot of you. You have a lot of stuff going on. And we just want to tell you to, to our family, we love you and we miss you and can't wait till you can be back out with us. And for those of you that's never donned the doors of the church and don't know who we are, we love you. And uh, we're praying for you and you're welcome here in our service tonight virtually. You're always welcome uh, to come over to the Canada Church. So uh, you pray for us. Leave us your prayer request, please, in the comment section. And leave us your praise reports in the comment section. We like to share both of those with you. So we thank the Lord uh, tonight for being here. Um, I don't know if anybody would want to sing a song for us tonight. Uh, it would be a, a blessing, I'm sure. Uh, Larry, I, I was thinking Larry might sing us a song tonight if he felt like it. Um, he might, you want to do a CD, Larry? Thank the Lord for the good testimonies that we've already heard tonight. And, uh, God's moved and touched and changed things. And make sure anytime during this service, if you have a testimony, uh, make sure you stand up and, and share it for the Lord or sit down there and share it for the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and thank the Lord in advance for touching Barry. I'm gonna, I ain't going to steal his testimony, but I'm thanking the Lord already. And I thank God that he's, he's touched Adam already. And I thank God... Uh, that he's moved in that anointing service. And so you all pray for Larry as he blesses us with a song tonight. You all pray for me. I yeah. just picked this out and I ain't seen it in a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jerry likes it. <laughs> I don't know. Pray for Jerry. I fall off that bike a lot of times. Trying to run everything. a window in the heaven I can close my eyes and see where there are no earthly struggles and the soul there is set free where the death and the shall Don't they? 
sound like home Where the Son of God is raining And the tears are finally gone now Don't they sound like heaven Sound like home, darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always on. The price of heaven is expensive But don't you worry about the cost It was paid in for by Jesus When he hung upon the cross We'll be there As an eternal reminder of the precious blood he shed. Don't they sound like heaven? Don't they sound like home? Where the sun of God is raining. Those tears. Don't they sound like heaven? Don't they sound like home? Darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always on. Darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always song for us before we study. <clears throat> uh, that's the big thing. We want everybody to be satisfied. You know that you have uh, liberty here to use your gifts for the Lord. Use them. Uh, that's, that's the main thing. I'm, Absolutely. I'm busy writing. Yeah, I'm playing dual hats. Yeah, yeah. Gary's got about four different things he's got to take care of tonight after we <laughs> when we get yeah. finished with Bible study. I, I was so. getting prepped for yeah. business meeting the clerk. I'm doing the clerk's job. I'm yeah, doing the treasurer's yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, all the way around. Yeah. No, we, we were. I, re I really think sometimes that I really. Do what now? <laughs> Go ahead and preach. I don't, man, I'm telling you what, it's been. I don't, I don't know that we really, I guess in my, my little mind, if I can comprehend just how my God is the king of the universe. And, and our little, my little problems that I have today, even though at the time they feel elevated and they feel real, but to get the mind of Christ... And to understand that his kingdom is not of this world. Yeah. It puts things in perspective Absolutely. because no matter how bad I think it is right now, it could always be worse. And I think the worst news that I could ever hear is if I stood before him and he said, Depart from me, I never knew you. That would probably be the, the worst news that I could get. In this life, and that's that's not downplaying anybody's problems or what we no, face sir. because they are real. But putting things in perspective of where they're at, and I guess who I don't know who wrote this song. Natalie Grant, she sung it, but I'm gonna I just like it, and if you'll bear with me, I I'll, I'll try to sing it.
tried to fit you in the walls inside my mind. Tried to pull you down. We are eye to eye. I messed that up. Let me start all over. Do what now? It looks like it. Can't hear it. Oh. I'll switch this side. This is great. I'll use this one then. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> Stack them up, right? I'm Danny. I'm beat. I'm rough on this guitar. It's a thousand wonders it's held. It has, it's, it has to be because it's a mark. <laughs> Try to fit you in the walls inside my mind. Try to pull you. Messed it up again. Sorry, I get, I get, I'm, I'm thinking about playing it. I just need to sing the song. So, Act One, Take Three. Try to fit you in the walls inside my mind. Try to you safely in between the lines try to put you in the box that I designed try to pull you down so we are eye to eye when did I forget that you've always been the king of the world Try to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How could I make you so small when you're the one who holds it all? When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? Just a whisper of your voice contained the sea. am I to try to take the lead yet I run ahead cause I think I'm strong enough but you're the one who made me from the dust when did I forget that you've always been the king of the world try to take life back right out of the king of the world how could I make you so small when you're the one who holds it all when did I forget that you've always been the king of the world Ooh, you said it all in motion every single moment brought it all to me and you're holding to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world how could i make you so small when you're the one who holds it all when did i forget that you've always been the king of the world you will always be the king of the world Amen. 
He's not. No, to we forget that. With the language is that he's given to the world. Have you ever thought about how many different languages there actually are? And yet, and everything that's known to human yeah. that's ever been recorded through history still can't define it. No, no chance. But Jesus no said, chance. when you have seen me, yeah. you have seen the Father. Right. And it gives you a glimpse of what he truly was about. Yeah, amen. Jesus said, I come not to do my own will, mm -hmm. but to do the will of the Lord. Father. Amen. He was a suffering servant, not to you and me. He was a servant to the Father for our behalf. Right, right. That's in, in my mind. That's I right. Just, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little blown away by it. And it's always been it's something I always knew, but I don't think it has ever been as real to me as it is sure, today. Sure, sure, amen. To know that it doesn't matter everything that's going on around me, Christ said, I came not into this world to right. establish a kingdom right, no. of this world. Right. I came to establish a kingdom in this world right. that will never be destroyed. Absolutely. If the body that you're dwelling in now is destroyed, yeah. that kingdom no. will always stand. Right. And if we are born into this kingdom by the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. by the Spirit, we will never fall. Right. I don't. I, I, how do we get there to put him down where we're at thinking that he's limited, that he can't, even when we are destroyed, and there's nothing less but the dust that blows in the wind to say he can't bring me back. Right. He can't. Job said, if I should die, yeah. and though these skin worms would destroy this yeah. flesh, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. I don't yeah. know. I, That's right. Man, I'm a... Yeah. Shelly said, now, don't get carried away. <laughs> she said, I can... I can feel it all over you. Just, I mean, it's just like a, almost just a vibrating Holy Spirit that's moving, and I, and it's very humbling to think that He, He's always yeah. been. Amen. There's no way we could ever describe Him, no other than if you believe in your whole heart that Jesus is the Christ, Amen. and you accept His calling into your life that you are full of sin and have no idea what the next morning yeah, Right, absolutely. Yeah. When you get to that point, he said, yeah. Jesus said, as I am in the Father and the Father's in we will come into you mm -hmm. and make our abode. Yeah, amen. That's the only way you can That's all come way. close to understanding who he's about. Yeah. That even when, boo, this outside here, this flesh, you already experienced it. It's failing you. Right, sure. But there is something right. that's in you right now yeah, well, that has been reborn. Right. Yeah. And it's not been reborn of the things of this world. It's been reborn by something holy, something righteous, and something that's true that he said if you knew the truth, that the truth would set you free. Yeah. It doesn't matter right. what comes our way. The truth is that What's on the outside is temporary. It's going to fail. But that precious thing, what's inside of you, yeah. will live forever. Right. Yeah. Do we want what he's got to offer us? Yeah. If we can actually see beyond the cross. See, fear right. is a natural reaction when moving closer to the truth. The truth is that this is failing. This building, we right. may not see it. It's right. built beautiful. It's blessed by the Holy It is failing. Right. See the cracks on the wall. Mm -hmm. See the paint chipping away. Look around at the yes. shifting of the ground, the decaying effect. But that's something that's inside of you that's in this dwelling right now. That's eternal. It's eternal. That's sure the part is. that yeah. Jesus said, I came to set up a kingdom that will never right. be destroyed. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. There's another place he said, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. That's the truth. And we're housing the Holy Spirit. And uh, thank you, Gary, for the song and the wonderful words.
And how would you ever describe the Lord? I don't know. What a beautiful song. I mean, thank you, Larry, for the wonderful, beautiful song tonight. Uh, we'll do about 20 minutes, 25 minutes of Bible study, and then we'll um, probably do a 10, 15-minute business meeting. It's so good to have you guys tonight. So good to be in the house of the Lord. I've got us, and, and listen, you know, we was off last week. We had a funeral, and I, I don't I do good week to week. Um, uh, so two weeks, uh, I've got us around Exodus 5 and 20. Is that close? Yeah. 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 Dana's got Mark. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so just Exodus 5 and 20, for those of you that are may, may watch tonight or whenever, those of you here with us, um, Moses has accepted the call. He's went to tell Pharaoh uh, to let the people go. And Pharaoh says, not only am I not going to let them go, but man, I'm going to make it harder and harder and harder. And in these last days, guys, I believe, God, I believe that things are going to get harder and harder and harder. We're getting ready to leave, just like the people of Israel. That's why I believe God directed us to study this. The church is getting ready to leave, just like the nation of Israel was getting ready to leave Egypt. And when they made it harder, when it got harder and they didn't get delivered, they, they, they had some questions and they had some concerns and they wondered what was going on. And so that's kind of where we picked this up. This is the children of Israel wondering this. And in Exodus, please help us tonight. Exodus chapter 5 verse 20. And we'll call this off about 8 or 5 after. Um, and it says, And they met Moses and Aaron. These were the leaders of Israel after they had been beat. Um, who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge you. This is them talking to, to Moses here and Aaron. Because you've made our savor to be aboard in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. Um, did you notice that, did you all notice that in chapter 4, just a little bit ago, that the news came that they were going to be delivered and they were all on their face worshiping the Lord and they were jumping up and singing songs and they were praising that the Lord was going to deliver them and the Lord was going to move. And when we see this not happening immediately, when they think it's going to happen, they wonder, Moses, what did you come to Egypt to do to us? Now, it's funny to me, Nadine, this is a strange thing to me. Well, not strange. I, I guess as we're studying, these things get interesting. But it sounds like that they thought, and this won't be the last time they think this, but it sounds to me like they thought Pharaoh really felt something good for them. Do you all get this here? Because they said, well, listen, you have made what we were what we were doing uh, and we're, what, what, what we, we were just getting along and we were just making it. Now, all of a sudden, we're hated. I got, I got news for them. They was hated all along. Amen. You know Jesus said the world hated him and they would hate us as well. I know that you get along most of you with your coworkers and I know you get along most, you know, with people you see in the store and you're all good to people and you love people and stuff. But the fact of the matter is the world and the devil as a whole don't like you very well. And God has promised that we're going to be delivered. Now, I don't know. I believe with all my heart the disciples thought that they, were, they would see the return of the Lord. I believe that every one of them died believing that they would see Jesus return like they seen him leave there on the Mount of Olives. He didn't. So what do you do when you, when you don't get delivered, when Barry comes and he prays? And again, we talk about this a lot, and you don't get the healing in you right now, and you don't see it in your... That doesn't mean... Folks, listen to me. You are going to be healed. I promise you are going to be healed. You say, Ron, how can you guarantee that? Because of the song that Larry just sung. No matter what, if we... Mickey got his healing... I mean, he's healed. You, I, you all remember last time we seen Mickey here in the church come in, I guess probably on a walker or maybe a wheelchair. I don't remember a wheelchair exactly. Folks, let me tell you something. That wheelchair, when he left here, that wheelchair stayed here and didn't follow him to heaven. Mickey is praising the Lord on the streets of glory tonight. And your loved ones and my loved ones, you're going to be delivered and we're going to be delivered. The issue we wrestle with, Larry, is when it don't come when we think it should, and when it don't come like we think it should. So what do we do? We lash out. 
And they reverted back to thinking. I mean, this is what it pictured to me of here is they thought, you know what, Pharaoh was good to us. Bull, he was good to you. He was not good to you. You were working in incredible bondage. And you know what, we, we, this is a, a very practical application in this, in the fact that we have people in this world that come and they, they give their life to the Lord or they, you know, they walk an aisle or whatever the situation may be. And then the, the road gets rough and things don't happen the way they do. And they revert back to saying, man, I, you know what? It wasn't so bad in the world. Let me tell you, you forgot. You forgot, my friends, how, what it was like in the world. You all remember what it was like to be lost. You all remember what it was like. Man, I'll tell you what, Gary got me stirred up tonight. Do you all remember what it was like to lay down on, on your pillow at nighttime and say, Lord, if you come, if you call me tonight or you come, I can't tell you, heaven's my home. How many's glad tonight that it's good that you can remember that Jesus delivered you from that, that you were saved and on your way to heaven? For heaven's sake, let us not revert back to think, boy, the bars was pretty nice. Or the clubs was pretty good. I can guarantee it. You're talking about experience it once and then it goes away. No, multiple. No, he comes back again. He Thank plays you. on us. He sure. continually works on us. This, what we're studying today, is relative to what we experience right now. Every time. Yes. Under real harsh circumstances. Yes. And if you're working for somebody and they show the slightest of favor, for whatever reason, you can relate to when it says that there is pleasure in sin for a season sure. and then there's a price that has to be paid. And it's almost like you get to this rut and you're thinking, man, I left that job and I remember <laughs> the weight that I had that's gone. Yeah. But now, I don't know, maybe it really wasn't well, as bad as what I thought it was. Take some. Because the payday was pretty good. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. But I, I forgot the stress level yeah. that he was literally destroying my spirit. Yeah. I couldn't laugh. I couldn't enjoy nothing. So what, what was I, what am I holding, what am I really weighing in the balance? Yeah. Don't I understand that he delivered me and Jesus said what I have set free is what? Free indeed. Free indeed. Not, not that. freedom that's limited. Right. It's like today, we are we living in the, in the freedom, enjoyment of the United States. Yeah. But there's limitations. Sure. There's things we have to follow. Yeah. It's, and there's a lot of restrictions and guidelines we have to go. I can't just freedomly run down the road at 100 mile an hour. They'll lock me up, put yeah. me out of the jail. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Hey, insurance yeah. goes up. They've got a better way of getting you. They'll just yeah. make you pay higher insurance. But that's, that's what we're seeing yes. here. I agree. And thinking that a sword yeah. is better? Yeah, man. Yeah, that a sword, that a bone. I remember Dave said it. Dave says to me things that I think about. He don't even know what I think about. But I remember, you know, somebody, Dave said, you know, we always go back to those high school days. And first thing everybody says, man, you don't know how good you got it. You're in high school. You're not, you don't have a house, but usually. You don't have a house payment. You don't have bills. You don't have the responsibility. Man, you got it made if you only know. Dave said, really, if you would look back and think about your years in high school, there are some stressful times. I remember, listen, there was. You remember them big, long t them tests and them essays? And, now, you're looking back on it saying that ain't nothing now to have come up with the bills. And but it was at that time. I mean, girls breaking up with you and got and, and I mean, listen, heartache and hurt and and but what happens is once we get so far removed from that, you know, it don't it seems like it's kinda scarred over and, and it doesn't hurt as, as bad and you don't recall those things. Tonight, folks, we need to be reminded. These folks in a very short period of time said, Moses, what have you done to us? You've made it hard on us, and the favor that we did have with Pharaoh is now gone. Folks, listen to me. I want you to know the devil has nothing but hurt, disaster. I believe John 10.10 10 would say it like this, that the thief come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Let us never forget what Jesus has done for us in the moments, Gary said, in the moments when it gets tough, and in the times when we're not delivered immediately. Let us never forget 
that Jesus has delivered us and heaven's our home. That's all in one verse there, I know. It's huge. His song fits what we're singing. It does, yeah. We can, we've got this thing. We're trying to fit Jesus in the American lifestyle. Yeah. This is what's going on with our church. These four verses that we've read here, three or four verses, this is what we're doing. The Bible says that we he's forgot. blinded our eyes so yes. we can't see, and he's not there. Yeah. Or he's blinded our eyes, the yeah. devil. Yeah. He's blinded our eyes, and he's dulled our ears of hearing. And we come here, and we get we get, get us a little bit of Jesus and we put him in our lifestyle and say, it's all right, Jesus yeah. said we can do it. We just got a little bit of Jesus on Sunday, and we'll feed him in here. Yeah. And everything's okay, but then when it hits the road, and we're like, well, wait a minute, what happened? Yeah. It said Moses and Aaron was standing in the way. <laughs> standing in the way. That? <laughs> so we're standing in the way. Standing in the way. These people had went back, and they'd already decided they was they were mad that, yeah. that Jesus, that they were being saved, our yeah. Savior. Yes, the worst. absolutely. Okay, now they're mad, so they come in here to church on Sunday. Yeah. Brother Jack says you got to repent of your sin. Yeah. You can't be living with other people. You can't be out here partying. All. <laughs> I mean, this is the gospel. It's true. Yeah. It says, be thou holy, for I am holy. Yeah. All right, so we get up here, Brother Rodge, me and you and Gary, and we say, if you just meet Jesus, everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Welcome to America. No, it ain't the case. G Jesus said, in this life, you're going to have trouble. Uh -huh. He uh -huh. didn't say you're uh -huh. going to get healed. He didn't say you're going to uh -huh. get a car. He didn't say he's not a country music song played backwards. You're not getting your wife and your truck. And your tr he didn't say none of that stuff. I'm tired of our churches. People tell us, Brother Gary, Amen. listen what happened. If you come to Jesus, your sins will be forgiven and you're going to live a rough life. It says if you but suffer you, with him, yeah, you'll yeah, reign with him. Yeah. You're not going to walk on easy street. If you're walking on easy street, something's there's wrong. something wrong. Something's not right. Listen to what I'm telling you. Yeah. If you ain't got no problems, Barry, guess what? You must be doing something because you got a problem. Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> the Lord said he overcome. And you're going to overcome. Him, you'll overcome. Amen. Amen. So let's get this stuff yes. together. Let's yeah. stop trying to shove the king of the world into our lifestyle yeah. and make them. That's what's wrong with Christianity. You think that, the, listen, do you think if you brought the people from China over here and sat in our church on Sunday that they would think we had Christianity? Well, do you think they was followers of Jesus? They'd be like, what is y'all doing? Singing three songs and jumping up and down because, you, I don't know, you put your money in the plate? They're losing their life. Cool. And you think that these people were said, we got beat. Yeah. Uh, it's too hard. Yeah. Okay, we're, now, I'm here is this. This is where the rubber meets the road. It's too hard to get up. I know we had COVID. I'm just going to watch the show on the TV, and I'll watch it when I wake up at 11.30 on Sunday. I won't get up and go to Sunday school. If I come in five minutes late for church, it'd be okay. I'm just going to do this, and we'll say praise the Lord, and we'll say amen. But there's people standing in the way to let you know. They even got them. Have you ever heard it? Why you preach so hard, Roger? Brother Gary, why are you preaching so hard? Now, here's Moses going back to the Lord and saying, what have you done to me, what? Lord? Yeah, listen, that's what you get in. Look at this. I cycle. can't even preach the word because yeah. now, I, I mean, I got four text yeah. messages. I can't believe you said that. Up yeah. in the pulpit. I didn't say it. God said it. Yeah. Amen. Here's the thing. Stop sinning if you're a Christian. Yeah. Show up to church. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Let's do what's right. Amen. Somebody's got to stand in the way. Because if not, you'll fall right back. And then it's my responsibility. It's your responsibility. It's, it's his responsibility to say, you can't live like that and go to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's not always the most pleasant physically. It's not. But in the end, we're delivered. It's, we, listen, if Jesus said you're delivered, if Jesus said you're free, let me tell you something. I don't care what the world says. You're delivered. This didn't look like it. This didn't look like it was going to work out, but Jesus, God, told them through the prophet Moses, you're going to be delivered. Now, you hold on to that promise come hell or high water, I guess you would say. You hold on to that promise because by the word of God, you're a delivered person. You are delivered. Now, you're, no, you are saved. saved. Now, there's a process going on when we're going to be free from all this when heaven gets, when we get to heaven. But, you have been delivered, and we're working on the promises of the Lord. Now, we, I, listen, I know a couple of verses, and, but there's so many good things to talk about here. What, how does it affect Moses? I asked you all a couple of weeks ago how do you, to think about Moses. How do you think Moses felt? You know Moses wasn't, he didn't have a cape, cape that I know of. He probably had some cloak or something, you know, but he didn't have a cape. He wasn't bulletproof. 
He wasn't, he had emotions like you and I. Where does that put Moses? So the people come out and say, Moses, you come and tell Pharaoh to let, let the people go and they beat us half to death. And now we can't get straw and they've told us we still got to make the same amount of bricks. Moses, where is this going? Where is this going? Let's we'll read just a little bit and then we'll kind of, we have business meeting. Anybody, anybody want to stay? We'll study some more afterwards. I'm just kidding. Um, and they, they said unto him, the Lord look upon you. I read that. Verse 22. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? Now I think, I love Moses. Oh goodness, I shouldn't say this from probably behind the pulpit. But I'll say that there is a, a scenario that we fall into right there too. That there was no evil sent or given by the Lord in this. There is a thought process that we get confused on. I heard somebody tell me, I met somebody at the cemetery the other day, walking, just randomly ran into somebody. God probably had us to have an appointment there. But he was visiting his wife. It was somebody we grew up with in Jerry Bottom, and he was visiting his wife's graveside there. He was teary-eyed, and, and I cried with him. I'm like Boo. Me and Boo, me and Boo. Boo done the same thing. Boo ran into a lady at the cemetery up there and, and, and went over. And I, this was a gentleman that I ran into, and he said, Rog, why does God hate me? Why does God hate me? My health is not good. My wife was taken at way too young of an age, and I know any age would be too young. He said, why does God hate me? Folks, listen, let's set the record straight here. Calvary proves that Jesus and God are nothing but love. We live in a cursed world that is under the control of the devil who was expelled from heaven and the Bible records that he came down like lightning to the earth and he has been nothing but turmoil and evil ever since. Every since this earth is in that condition and God has sent a way to deliver us out. Please don't be confused. Please don't be confused like we do. I don't want to say Moses here. There's, there's the, Moses, oh goodness Christ. But let us not ever uh, let us not ever even let that entertain our mind. God, why did you send this evil to me? God, why did you allow? This is nothing but the devil. The devil hates God's people. He hates God's people. He didn't want them delivered. He was doing everything that he could and trying to get them to rise up and rebel against the deliverer that God had sent that way. God don't hate anybody. He loves you. And he says... For, and this is Moses finishing up. For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people. Now there's where he got it right. I, my opinion, right? It's Pharaoh. Pharaoh done evil to the people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Can, does that look, sound like the Moses that Charlton Heston played on the Ten Commandments there? Up on, <laughs> no. Now we see Moses, don't we, this mighty man and this... Folks, listen, he's seen this. You know how bad it bothered him because 40 years earlier he's seen a brother being mistreated and he went out and slew an Egyptian taskmaster. And now he's saying, Lord, I came in your name to do your will. And now my brothers and sisters are paying the cost. For me, the greatest lesson that we ever learned in this last year, Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How many times do we turn to the Yeah. Yes. How many times do we we've got a problem with God that I'm not going to deliver? Oh, please. I wish you hadn't said that. It's true. Please help me. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. And I applaud Moses for this, don't you? I do applaud Moses for this part. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, yes. 
Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. 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 Ain't that something? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Who do you turn to? Oh, my goodness. No. I love that. Do you all not? Yeah, that's not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, let him ask. A smart man will learn from his own mistakes, won't he? Be sure. We, yeah. We've experienced that. That's what, wisdom. What we'll learn. Yeah. It's more, yeah. Wisdom yeah. is when you, I'm learning from somebody else's. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. True wisdom yeah. comes from the Father and ask him. Yeah, who will? You all don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that, I never just assume you mix it, the Holy Spirit just comes. When people turn on you, who, you, who should you turn to? Turn to the Lord. When things don't go the way... Who did Jesus turn to? Who did Jesus turn to when they turned to the Father? And he even prayed for them, to, for God to forgive them when he turned to them. Do you all see this here, now look, As we, I know we, could, we do business now. We, and that gives us a fresh start on chapter 6 next week. But do you all see this in the fact that Moses, I believe Con, Connie and Nadine, this is my opinion, uh, I think that doubt crept back up. Um, remember, remember this before he ever left, before he ever accepted the call, before he remember all those conversations he had and all that doubt that he had, and then obviously when it comes up and things don't go the way that you remember, does anybody remember what God told him would happen? You all remember that studied the Bible with us uh, these last few weeks? Does anybody remember what God said, Pharaoh? You go down, or Moses? You go down and tell Pharaoh. To let my people go. Do you remember what God said Pharaoh would say? No, it ain't happening. He, he said, said it ain't happening. And this is going to happen yeah. and he won't let you go. And it, this is going to happen and he yeah. won't let you go. But yeah. when the blood, yeah. don't get me started. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, me. when the blood. That's right. But, folks, listen, God has told us, Brett said, it's, this is a way that is not always good. There's great joy in this life. Do you all agree with that? I, I, there's great joy in the middle of this war that's going on and raging gas prices and COVID. We're, hopefully we're getting on the backside of it and all those things. I, I still have to tell you in my heart there is joy unspeakable and full of glory because the Lord lives in there. And, and I think we forget that. I think Moses said, for, Lord, wait a minute. I come down to do your work and you ain't delivered nobody yet. There ain't nobody been delivered yet. God, you think maybe he forgot, Connie, you think maybe Larry, that maybe he forgot in the midst of all that devastation, in the midst of all that struggle, in the midst of all that disappointment, in all the midst of that discouragement there, do you think maybe for a minute Moses had forgot that God said, I am going to deliver the people but it ain't going to be easy. I think maybe we forget sometimes. And make, we mistake the issues and the troubles and the health issues and the financial issues and, and, and the relationship issues. I think a lot of times we mistake that and say, God, I thought you saved me. I thought you delivered me. Church, he has tonight. He has delivered you. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and you've asked him to forgive you of your sins, and you've confessed that with your mouth, you are saved and on your way to heaven. Do we have some battles? Do we have some struggles? Do we get our feelings hurt? Yeah. But let us not forget. The number one, there's no shame in this. I love this. There is no shame that when Moses had some doubts, and when he wondered, I love it, Gabe, that he went to the Lord. That's and he right said, way. I don't understand this. And that's okay. You, is that okay with you all tonight? Uh -huh. That's okay. I don't understand Donna having surgery. And I'm thankful she come through it. I don't understand those things. I don't understand uh, why uh, but who, people... Who's the king of the universe? He's the king of the universe. And we don't have to understand it. We just have to trust that God said, I'm going to deliver you. And he's going to, folks. 
He's going to by the grace. And it, doesn't, it doesn't start out right out of the gate other than the fact that you've overcome the flesh yeah. and you've humbled it yeah. by saying, I need you, and you're born again. Yes. That's the first battle that you will face. And you'll notice that after that, you've got a victory that actually goes quite a few months. Yeah. And then it starts, <laughs> yeah. this conditioning. Well, if I'm hanging on to the world too tightly and the Lord's yeah. pulling it, the Spirit is pulling me out of the world, then don't you think it might dislocate my arm every now and then? Could do. How about Jacob? Yeah. So how hard would it be to just lay it down yeah. every weight and every measure of sin easily so that easy so easily besets us? Amen. It's in our control. But just to lay it down. Lay it down. If you knew, he's done showed it to you that what you're going through, well, you, boy, you're going to come through his flying color. Yeah. You come out of the other side, now you know. You know, yeah. Who took you through it. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's yeah. what I, that's, I guess that for my journey. Yeah. And seeing what, what's taking place. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like he's, he'll let me have a little glimpse in it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. And it's then fine. all of a sudden I, there it is. I'm, sure. I'm back back in it. The bell rings for round 12. I'm <laughs> being the flesh and going at it again. Let's it, say, it's I'm true. In it. That's true, guys. Jerry, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, man, I, it's been great listening to all these comments. It's really, yeah. I really love it. Uh, and I was thinking, you know, just like what we go through, uh, <clears throat> you know, you, you see this in so many churches. And, yeah. People, they get mad. Oh, goodness. Over stupid stuff. They get mad. And they leave. Well, they don't go to another church. A lot of people, a lot of people don't. Right. Well, they're back out in the world doing this and doing that. Well, if I got mad at you, uh, where would I go to? Who would I turn to? If, you know, if I just went out in the world, have I forgot what God brought me from? That's it, bro. You know, that's before it. Before I was saved, that's I it. had nobody to call on. Nobody helped me. Yeah. You know, really, I mean, yes. it took me a bit of good to pray because yeah. I wasn't, you know, yeah. really I wasn't praying. I thought it was, but it wasn't. But now that you get saved, why would you want to go back to that? And you don't have anybody that can help you yeah. if you go back out. Amen. As long as you, you know, as long as you try to keep moving forward, you've always, I don't care what happens, you've always got somebody to help you through, no matter what. Folks, that's want. true. That's true. That's he so true. never, ever, ever fail me. Never. He's always goes ahead. Yeah. Man, he just makes things work out that you say, there ain't no way. It's absolutely so true. if I quit, I get mad because it ain't going my way. Yeah. Ain't got nobody to help me. Where now, are we going to? Now Where are we going to go to? Now he's quoting Peter. Now he's quoting Peter, yeah. yeah. You want to go well, to? Where am I going to go? Yeah. He said, Lord, you've right. got the words of eternal life. Listen, we're going right. to be aggravated. We're going to, I know yes. we got to quit. But we're going to be aggravated. Yes. We're family, guys. Yes. You're going to get aggravated at me every now. Some of you say, listen, I wish you'd be quiet. we got a business meeting. You're aggravated right now, maybe. <laughs> no, no, I hope you're not. Uh, but, but listen, we're family. Families, we're going to disagree. We're going to have. Yes. But yes. Cherry says, where are we going to go? Let us not ever get in the state of mind that the leaders of, of Israel said here where they said, you know what? We had it better. Wish you, wouldn't even, wish you hadn't even got involved. But we, we could have just kept making bricks. We could have just, ain't it funny what we forget? Yeah. The bondage that we have been delivered from. Yeah. And we, this ain't the last time this will happen. Mm -hmm. They get out in the wilderness and things get tough. They will, they'll tell Moses to his face. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy, we had melons and stuff back there, you know. Yeah, folks, listen, there ain't nothing worth going back to. Amen? Amen. There ain't nothing Amen. worth going right. back to. Praise the Lord. We'll talk about this some more. Um, yes, ma'am. Sure. If we're obedient to God, and just like the brother coming up, if, if that oh. point was not for him tonight, it could have been for somebody else in this church. Amen. And I know that by experience. Yes. I did that one night. And, and you know, and, and I prayed to God. I said, God, I know that you said you'd not put no more on me than I could bear. Yeah. And I was at the point I couldn't turn him off. And I, could, I couldn't turn him to work or anything. And so they, I did the annoying and Right. And I suffered for almost a week. And one night I just went to bed and I said, Lord, I can't take no more. I'm at the end of my rope and you've got to touch me. But I said, I know that without a shadow of a doubt that when we did that healing prayer, somebody, somebody. was touched. Amen. And I want to thank you, Jesus. 
<laughs> Amen. Do you know that when I became not selfish anymore, and I started thanking God oh. for somebody else's healing, I got that's the when you. That's that's enough stand up and shout right there. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. enough stand up and shout. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. For yes, Amen. what he's done. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Amen. 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 Yeah, it's it's not listen. It's not always easy, but it's there's a reward, and we're going to make it by the That's grace right. of God. And ain't nothing very worth going back to. <clears throat> I don't care nothing. So, but thank you all. And I just closed my Bible. Gary, are you going to do the notes? And we definitely want to say have a great evening to our folks that watch this on live or, or whenever you watch it. We we love you. Come over at Sunday, for Sunday school at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. And then stay with us for worship service right after that on Sundays. And if you feel so inclined, we would be we would welcome you with open arms. Come out on Bible study on Wednesday night and youth group at 7 o'clock. Um, this church loves you and we're praying for you. And we look forward to maybe seeing you soon. Hope you can come over. We say good night and God bless you. Um,